It's the witching hour next. Yes, you got that right. All the craziness going on with debt ceiling issues in our capital, Washington, D.C. Who's right? Who's wrong? What are they saying? F the f F your credit cards, F the de debt ceiling. It is a complete mess. Guys, this is next on Real Estate Daily. Welcome everyone, my name is Troy and every day we go over the latest news in real estate, housing and the mortgage markets. Now today, I'm not giving anything for free. Zero zilch, you can't have the guide for free. You can't have, well, what, what, uh, 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 uh. Hold on, let me make a phone call. Yeah, producer Emmy, you put up that, you, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so so today, free, a buyer and seller's guide. Well, it's nice to start reading over it. I know it's kind of long, but it will get you prepared for when the bozos in Washington and the bozo named the Fed are going to actually take care of us and the economy in reality and then get us back on track and get this housing market off its beep. Yes, you got it. That that was that was kind of bad. Uh, yeah. Producer, let me stay on top of it, okay? All right, let's jump right into it. Buying a, wow, wow. You're blowing my mind. Whoa, my girlfriend right there, Diana Olick. Do the inverse of Diana Olick, and that's the reality of life. We have we've said this over and over. It's just like the Jim Cramer. You throw a stock out there, Jimmy, Jimmy promotes it. You know that everyone is doing exactly the opposite. Ask Peloton how they're doing. All right, pending home sales unchanged in April. Let's go kind of flip that up a little bit. Down 20% year over year, no inventory. Let's go over inventory. It's down over 20%. So actually this market's a little hotter than people think it is. It's just, it's holding its own, even though we can't figure out what's going on in Washington, D.C. So it's pretty cool that we're seeing that pending home sales are just holding steady and probably, uh, I, I believe we're in a recession. Uh, the government doesn't want to tell, to tell us that, but I believe we're in a recession. Uh, at least my, my, my bank account tells me that. Uh, so with that being said, we're seeing a little bit of resiliency here in the mortgage market. Now, what's the real true meaning of whether we're in a really bad housing market or not? It is foreclosures, right? Let's go look at this. Mortgage delinquencies rate falls to a new low in March, guys. We continue to see this over and over. It's not, people are not delinquent. If you're, if somebody is in, an, in a situation where they need to sell their home, what do they do? Well, they either can give it to a, they can sell it to a flipper uh, or a hedge fund. I mean, these are all viable. You can, you can just sell it on the open market with a real estate agent. And, and in any one of those scenarios, you should be able, unless you bought the home in the last, you know, six months or even the last maybe 12 months, you should have equity in that house, okay? None, none of these are 100% financing. So immediately you should have 3.5% down FHA. You're, you've gone up or just slightly gone up a little bit. So your house is worth a little bit more. You should be in a, in a position in which you can turn around and sell that home and maybe break even. So a lot of my clients have had $100,000, $50,000 plus gains, even when they're in delinquency themselves. So everything's been at that point. And I would definitely consider, you know, that we don't see delinquencies up. This just shows, again, resiliency in the housing market. All right. Next article here. This is from CBS News. Buying a home is cheaper than renting in only four U.S. cities. Absolutely, it should be more expensive to buy a home. Why? Because once you buy a house, you are steady all the way through, right? If you got a 30-year fixed mortgage, you're paying the same rate today as you would 29 years from now. I remember going back, way back in this, just my age, when my parents bought their first house, they were paying about $350 a month. They thought the world was gonna fall apart, that they, they were scared. It was a natural progression. You have, you start, you start, you, you get married, buy a house, have kids, and then you just like kinda, you know, be scared up for three or four years, and all of a sudden, your 
wages go up, you start seeing things out there, and now you have more of a comfort zone. Well, if you were buying a house today versus rent, rents today, why are we even comparing it? That stupidity. Let's say if you bought a home three years ago and what rents are today, you might see rents higher than three years ago. So what does that mean? That means that it doesn't make sense renting, period. If they're gonna compare today's rates, you're always gonna be trailing. The majority of mortgages will always be higher at the moment. But there is no doubt about it, over the last 70 years of data, that rents definitely went higher in, in time than, than the mortgage payment. And I go back to my parents who bought 35, 40 years ago, 350 bucks, come on people. I mean, even, uh, even four or five years ago, we still ran into things in the 2000-ish, right? You can't, get a, you can't even get a, uh, a suite or a one bedroom for less than 2000. It doesn't make sense, right? So uh, again, if you're renting, get a plan together. The government's not gonna help you. They're not gonna subsidize rents. I've been on, I, they, they, the state of California did the first good thing is that they subsidized mortgages. They subsidized people's buying of homes for the first time. This is something I've been an advocate of for so long and I'm going to start seeing it as we get into the future here. And I, I really believe tokenization and cryptocurrency is really gonna have a big, big part of this. All right, so let's jump into it. Uh, mortgage rates rise at 6.57%. It's a 10 week high. I actually think we're going to probably run into the October numbers uh, that we saw that really stalled the market out. And again, it's, it's because of three events. One is that we're looking at the summertime. We have graduations going on. People wanna go on a little bit of vacay right now. Number, which we saw last two years, by the way. It, it lasted for about a month. Number two though, we have a debt ceiling issue that we're running into with Washington DC. If we can get that settled, hopefully within the next seven days next 14 days, whatever, we can see rates ease. And then number three, the Fed, they just can't, it, it's now confusion. Now I keep seeing, you know, at one point they were saying, yeah, I think we're gonna stop raising rates on the next Fed meeting in June. And then we turn around and we see a couple of Fed chairmen say, oh, we need to continue. It's only destroying the banking system. It's, it's really destroying the economy as well as the, as well as the uh, employment markets out there. It, if, if you were to take a poll and vote, whether you'd rather have kind of the higher inflation versus the continually tightening of rates, I think that America would vote the Fed, you're fired, get out. All your 400 PhDs and all your idi idiocies, get out, you're really hurting the market. All right, and let's jump into it. We just saw another five, basis points go up on conventional flat on fha but look at everything is up everything is up and it's up uh you look at the pattern here if we just show it this is what we've seen ever since you know we're talking you know the debt right here you know we're looking at what is this may uh this is may 11th now and we're just rolling up to the end of this month that's when these talk that when this debt conversation came up and we're just seeing this trajectory up, you know, look at it. I mean, we were at what, 6.38 and now we're at 6.7. We went up half a basis point over this, over this, which is going to hurt the housing market because they can't make a decision there in Washington, DC. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. If you like it, hit the like button. Otherwise, leave a comment below. I'm more than happy to answer those comments, criticisms, you know, compliments, I, I take them both. It's a backhanded slap or it's a forehanded slap. I, I'm used to it. You guys take care. I'll see you tomorrow.